I'm going to explain why I am wearing this outfit. I am wearing this because it's Valentine's Day when we're filming this, as well as the current Beyonce, my album. I'm dressed like Beyonce because my album's coming out. The current Beyonce. That's the whole explanation. We'll show the album again real quick. There you go. That's why I look like this. Okay. And now... <laughs> <laughs> now I'll actually get into the review. So, Rushmore, I had never seen this one before. It sort of snuck under the radar for me. And I liked it. I'm not the biggest Wes Anderson fan. We've talked about Wes Anderson on here before. We've talked about Asteroid City. I watched Asteroid City. And I gotta say, this is a lot better than Asteroid City. This might be my favorite one that I've seen, other than Fantastic Mr. Fox. I feel like Fantastic Mr. Fox still has an edge, because it's, like, perfect, no notes, you know? But this movie is very good, and I definitely liked it more than a lot of other Wes Anderson's that I've seen. Uh, but say what you will about Wes Anderson, the movies always look really good. It's shot, and it has a specific style. Uh, which, you know, whether you like it or not, you gotta give him, give him credit for having a very specific vision for his work. Uh, the current Beyonce. Uh, current Beyonce is my new album. Uh, that I've, I've showed it in a bunch, so maybe if people want to see it later, I'll show it again. But, it's not the current, that's like, <laughs> that's like a, a grape or a raisin or whatever. A current spelt like that, but that's fine. The current as in the present Beyonce, but uh, that's funny. I like that. Um, no, but this movie was cool. Uh, it was well written. It was funny. It made me laugh quite a bit out loud. Jason Schwartzman's the main character, a young Jason Schwartzman. And basically, it's a story of a young student who's Max, who is Jason Schwartzman, and he's becomes infatuated with his teacher and he becomes in love with her. And then he's also friends with Bill Murray, and Bill Murray is like a rich owner of a steel mill or something, and they become friends. And then he also falls in love with this teacher. And obviously, it's there's the inappropriate factor of Max being younger than the teacher, and that's addressed very well, I feel like. Because uh, the teacher's like, no, we can't do it. But I think it's, you know, they, they do a good job of portraying these characters and their feelings of what they're going through, and it makes the story compelling, and I, and again, the, there's really, like, good dialogue, and it's very funny, so that's, that's a, one of the main reasons to watch this. I'd say, let's look at the Rotten Tomatoes, because that's what I do here. All right, 90%. That's pretty good for critic score. In fact, that is very good, but this, this might be my favorite. I'd have to watch the Royal Tenenbaums again. I think I put it on the list, even, uh, to review, so maybe we'll review that one soon. But Rushmore was very good. I, and the only one com comparable would be the Royal Tenenbaums. As far as the live action movies, again, the fan Fantastic Mr. Fox is my favorite Wes Anderson. But let's look. And 91% audience, so people just generally really like this, and I can see why. I also did. It's an average of 8.10 out of 10. So that's like, that's like, what? 8.10? Wouldn't that just be. 9 out of 10? <laughs> That's weird. But uh, anyways, 91% um, and then 4.3 out of 5 average rating for the for the audience score. So it would go up to 86 per, or go down to 86%. From 91, I like to click on to see what the average rating would be because it gives you a little bit more perspective of what each person rated the movie individually. Uh, anyways, let's look at some of the reviews. Let's read a couple good ones and then try to find some of the very few bad ones. A quirky, sometimes hilarious, and often touching comic fable. There's an unshakable confidence about this coming-of-age fable that matches that of its central character, Max Fisher. Uh, it's bittersweet tale about growing up, anchored by sensational turns from the cast and a pitch-perfect script. Yeah, I mean, I can't say nay to that. The cast is very good and the script is very good let's find a bad review though let's see what what the contrarians have to say about it it's all good oh here's a bad one what i wanted was a larger perspective something more insightful than the one thing after another existential whimsy so i think i kind of get what he's saying by that by because that's sort of how the story operates is they they show a bunch of 
like character traits like but i like this about it like they have this scene where they show jason schwartzman how many extracurricular activities he's in and he's in like 25 that's why his grades are suffering because he's in so many extracurricular activities and there's little things like that and then him showing all these different montages i think that's sort of what he's saying but i don't know i like that i thought it was handled very well uh so i disagree with that review i figured i would um Let's read some more bad ones. The quirkiness seems a little forced, a little overdone. That's fucking Wes Anderson. That's what he, this is what he does. <laughs> then you just don't like his style, it, feel, it feels like. The charm is a little too forced. The story barely believable, and it's allure overly calculated. Barely believable is the best kind of story in a movie, I would say, because the, it gives you a little bit more. It gives you a little bit of excitement. And I feel like, that's a good thing. Um, ooh, but they're saying... They're saying otherwise. And here's another bad review. The charm is a little too forced. The story barely believable. I already read this. I already read this. Moving on. <laughs> Let's find another bad review if we can. Here's another one. Anderson has an idiosyncratic sensibility. The rare ability to create a world that is completely his own. Unique worlds, however, can be off-putting enough to discourage civilians from spending time there. Okay, so he just didn't like the image. At least he recognizes that it is unique and stuff. So I, I, I can't fault him for just not, for just not liking it, which is fair. I can't fault anybody for not liking anything really. Uh, that's the beauty of movies and f art in general. It's a, all the opinions on it are subjective. What did Roger Ebert have? Roger Ebert didn't like it structured like a comedy but there are undertones of darker themes yeah it's a darker comedy what's wrong with that and i almost wish they'd allow the plot to lead them into those shadows oh he wanted it to be darker actually okay that's interesting that's actually fair kind of that's what he wanted uh when watching it but i think it it was a good balance of that it has the light comedy and it has the dark themes and it works together in a fun Sort of way, I, I thought. This is in better than any of other Wes Anderson's movies, live action, that I can think of. Except for, again, maybe. The Royal Tenenbaums, which I want to see again. Um, but, yeah, no, this movie is good. Let's look at the mother-loving IMDb page. 7.6 out of 10 is pretty good. The popularity is going down. Let's look at the cast. The excellent, excellent cast. Jason Schwartzman as Max Fisher, the 15-year-old boy. Uh, Bill Murray as Herman Bloom, his friend who owns the steel mill or whatever. Uh, very good performances from both of them. Luke Wilson, he's Dr. Peter Flynn. He's not in it for a lot of the movie, but he does a good job for he, he does a good job playing the straight man in this, I would say. And now let's see, is there anybody else? that I recognize, not really, I think that's it, and so, Olivia Williams, Rosemary Cross, I know I've seen her in other stuff, let's actually click on her right quick and see what she's known for, she's known for Mush Rushmore, an education, I don't want to see this ad for Tylenol, uh, <laughs> The Ghost Rider, um, I think I've seen The Ghost Rider, and The Sixth Sense, okay, so I've definitely seen her and stuff before. That makes sense. Okay, dokie. Let's go back to the IMDb page and look down at the box office information. See how this thing did in theaters. Theaters. Okay. Oh, it's not. It's not giving me the information. Load the page. There you go. Here we go. All right. Details, box office information, $9 million budget with a $17 million gross. This is sort of what Wes Anderson does, though. He makes movies with relatively low budgets, and then he, he does about double the budget, give or take. That that's, was the same case with Asteroid City. Little, quite a bit higher budget than this. It was like, it was like $50 million, I think. Uh, or 20, no, it was $25 million. Uh, but then it grossed 50. That's what it was. Uh, but this that's still good. It almost grossed double. Not quite. So maybe you could still say this underperformed, debatably. But 
it was pretty close to, to double the budget. So it's pretty good, I think, still. It definitely made its money back. And that's what matters the most. Um, but yeah, I had never even heard of this movie. But then I was when I was reviewing Asteroid City, my buddy and fellow critic, G. Berg, said, Hey, you should check out Rushmore. It's my favorite one by Wes Anderson. I was like, hey, I haven't seen that. And so we checked it out. And again, I thought this was very good. I have some notes, though, and so let's look at those. But like I said, this is pretty good. Boo. All aboard the choo-choo train. Oh, I didn't see that Ray-Ban whistle. I didn't see that you followed me. Thank you for the follow. I should say when people follow. It used to. I don't know why the heck it doesn't now. But yeah, thank you for the follow. <laughs> Um, maybe it did it right before, um, I went live. That must have been it. Anyway, thank you for, thank you for the follow. If you're still here. If you're not, that's okay. But thank you. Um, let's look at my notes for Rushmore. Extracurricular activity. So I already said this sort of, but yeah, I just really like this part where they just have the long list of activities he's in and they sort of get increasingly ridiculous. Like he's... Uh, president of the beekeeping club and he's in the model UN and he's in all these different clubs and I like that uh, it, it adds to his character for sure and in fact it's one of the I think the main driving character traits of Max Fisher in this movie where'd the whiskey glass go okay this is a continuity thing but that's what that's what I'm here for basically it's mainly continuity and little nitpicks like the, like this but Bill Murray goes up a diving board. He's holding a glass of whiskey. He drinks the glass of whiskey, and then it cuts, and he goes off the diving board. Where did the glass of whiskey go? Did he put it down? I don't see it when he jumps off the diving board. So that's a little little nitpick, but yeah, where did it go? Doesn't make any sense. Where did the whiskey glass go? Next note. Paper says... Oh, babush. Paper... She says is is magnificent, has error. Okay, yeah, I remember what I meant by this. Okay, so the teacher's grading stuff, and like, I paused it and I read it because I was curious about it, and it was there was like spelling mistakes and stuff, and like it was obviously for like grade three or whatever lower grade, and so you know it's it's fine, but she said magnificent on it, and I don't even know what the maybe there's no grades. I don't really know how this how it works, but it was just straight up, it wasn't magnificent, there was errors with it, the sentences, you know, weren't put together properly, and maybe I'm, uh, <laughs> again, I'm nitpicking too hard on a child's paper they wrote, but still, I don't think it was magnificent, I think that's a little bit, she's just uh, sugar sugarcoating it a little bit, but anyways, moving on, um, my next note is, Wes Anderson loves the theater. And yes, he absolutely does. Because not only this movie, but also in... And you get a sense from that from all his, his productions, his movies. They have a very theatrical feel in a lot of ways. Uh, the way that characters deliver lines. The way the script is written. and But in the, this movie, there is plays within plays. Max, one of his main character traits is that he writes plays that are very well loved by everybody in the town and also in Asteroid City it centers around theater too so yeah my notes just like clearly Wes Anderson likes theater there's nothing wrong with that but I just I just thought it was noteworthy let's look at the next note how does he know that she is house sitting so this could be explained by did Bill Murray and the teacher have talked before this, but he just finds her and goes to her house that she's house sitting at. It's not even her house. So how did he know she was there? That's my question. This, but again, maybe they've talked about this before, but they didn't. They didn't show that, and they didn't explain that at all. So that's why I wonder. Um, so that didn't make sense. How does he know that she's house sitting? My next note is. 
did Bill Murray destroy the wrong bike? And now I know the answer to this is no. But the reason I ask this is because they show... Because Bill Murray and Max Fisher are mad at each other. They're in a sort of a feud because they're both in love with the same woman. And so at one point, Bill Murray runs over Max's bike with his car. But then the next scene, they show Max on it, on a bike. And I guess what happens, they sort of explain later, to be fair, but I guess what happened is that he, he got a new bike, but he kept the broken one. But they don't show that, and I think this, I would have preferred the storytelling to be have been very clear in that moment instead of telling it us later on in the film. Because I was wondering, I was like, what the fuck happened with his bike? Um, my next note is, cutting his brakes is crazy. I like this element of the movie, but it, it is crazy. Um, but it's showing just how much he is obsessed with this, with this teacher, how much he's in love, or whatever you want to call it. With this teacher, the lengths that he's willing to go to. He cuts Bill Murray's brakes, and luckily... He's okay, but, you know, that's a very dangerous thing to do, obviously. Cut someone's brakes. It's not not a good thing to do. Um, excuse me. The tree falling down is wild. So, yeah, there's a point where Bill Murray just, like, touches a tree and it falls down. And I don't get why. That's all. Moving on. You want him to date Margaret so bad. So, this whole time where Max is sort of in this romance kind of but not really because the teacher isn't interested because he's so young the whole time this is going on here there is this margaret who is actually a good match for him and the whole movie are like they should get together they should get together they should get together and then of course at the end they get together but throughout the movie it's like why aren't they together it's crazy my nose is starting to act up man Excuse me. Oof. I might have to blow my nose. I don't want to. But is this wig making me sneeze? <laughs> or making me want to sneeze? Oh, well. We're good for now. Next note. What mark is on Max's cheek? I do not understand this. I rewound it a few times. There's like a kiss mark or a blemish on his cheek at one point, And I don't... I don't know why. It may have been explained, but I don't get it. My nose is really itchy. I'm sorry, folks. I gotta blow my nose. Oh. Could it, this, it might be this wig. Oh. I've only worn this wig for short periods of time before. I haven't worn it for four-hour intervals yet. Well, I, have, I still haven't it, but yeah. It'll be, it's like, I've worn it for like 20 minutes now or whatever, a little more, a little more than that. But anyway, maybe now I'll be okay. Let's check this out here. What other notes we got? Smoking in a hospital. Yeah, and I, Bill Murray's smoking on an elevator in a hospital. This is in the 90s, I think, that's when this takes place. I think it might be it might take place earlier, but it's hard to say. Um, but still, smoking in the hospital. Maybe let's do a quick. Rushmore was nineteen ninety nine, right? Ninety eight. When does Rushmore take place? Do, do, do. I think it's just present day, 98. Um, so that answers that. What was my note, though? Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, the smoking in a hospital. When was that allowed? Let's, let's ask Google that. When was smoking banned from hospitals because at one point you could 
Oh man. Well, this is just for where I live in Saskatchewan. But. Dude, oh. Like 2005, it says. Ooh, so, really? You could smoke that? Maybe, so maybe this is legit. Maybe this is, that, that answers my question. Ooh. So I guess that's okay then. You could smoke in a hospital. Um, at least in 1998, maybe. Although, again, mine's for where I live, which is Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. But I digress. Moving on here. He buys dynamite. I just like this because you don't ever see people buying dynamite in the movies. It's always them using the dynamite and that's it. You actually see the, the them buy the dynamite from like a dynamite guy. And I like, I don't know, that's all my note. I like that. Moving on. Um, lots of montages, but I think they work to the movie's advantage. I like them. Uh, I like how Magnus and Max make up. Magnus is this Scottish bully that sort of is constantly berating Max and getting mad at him, and they're constantly fighting. Uh, they do not like each other, but then at the end it turns out that Magnus always wanted to be in one of Max's plays, and Max puts him in a play, and they have a nice sort of moment at the end, and I like that. It's sort of, the relationship comes full circle, kind of, and I like that. Even though at the end, uh, he's like, well, Max stepped on all half of my lines in the play and stuff, but that, I think that just adds to the character and it's funny. Um, and it, it just proves to show that they're probably still going to keep fighting, even though he put them in a play. That's just how their characters are. Did Bloom pl pay for Max's play too? I think so. I think he probably did because there's a lot of... This is a public school at this point. Max starts off at Rushmore, which is a private school. But then he gets expelled because he does so much crazy shit. It's honestly fair that he gets expelled. And then he goes to the public school and he puts on this play. But there's so much shit in it. He does like a very realistic war play. And there's like little sticks of dynamite around with like explosions blowing up in the background. And like playing little toy planes flying around and um, big sets. And it, it, so I wondered, did Bill Murray also fund this? Because he gave him money... For, for some of his other ventures in the film. Uh, so I'm assuming he did, but I don't know if they actually say that he did give him money for the play exactly. Uh, but I th I think he did, so it's close enough, right? Moving on. She'd know he improvised the scene, but Max has to say he improvised the scene. Yeah, Margaret is in the play, and at the end... Max and them are talking, and she's like, I like this part when you you did this thing. And he's like, oh, I improvised that whole part. And she and I was just thinking, she's in the play. Like, she would know you improvised it. She knows what's in the script. Uh, so that was obviously just for the audience, him saying that, but it felt weird because, you know, he's talking to her. I feel like they could have said that in a, in a way that made more sense. Uh, to be t to be saying it around Margaret, but anyway, moving on. Um, good ending. I like how it wraps up nicely. He's with Margaret, and the teacher. It's open ended, but he's probably gonna end up with Bill Murray. Probably, but again, it's open ended, so you don't know that she could maybe go with Luke Wilson. But all you know is that things have worked out. They're still friends, the teacher and Max, but it all. It all sort of works out and is wrapped up in a tight, neat little package. And yeah, this movie was good. Like I said, one of my favorite Wes Andersons that I've seen, I must say. And so let's give it a rating, because I'm out of talking points. I'm going to give Rushmore. This movie's pretty good. Solid, even. I mean, the eight point... 8.7 I feel like that's that's what I'm feeling like right now for this one 8.7 out of 10 uh, if people want to watch this movie it's on Disney Plus but yeah it was fun the performances were great it made me laugh a lot more than I thought it would very good script not too complicated like some of Wes Anderson stuff might be but 
This was very funny, well done, and I quite liked it. Rushmore. 8.7 out of 10 ducks.